create your very own custom templates in the Lightroom print module. Pretty awesome if you want to create your own layouts for um, photo books or you want to create like a canvas layout or a collage layout or something like that. Doesn't matter what you want to use it for, but it is really, really cool. Um, all the files that you create in the print module can be exported as JPEG files. So if you look at the screen here, this entire page, if I export it, will be one image with all four images correctly laid out and done for me. Cool, guys. So let's get into it. Awesome, so what I have in front of me is pretty accurate in terms of what you should be having in front of you, okay? Um, if I go to Lightroom template and select a 4x6 template with nothing selected, this is what you'll see. To create your own custom template, the first thing you need to do is go to Layers, Layout Style and choose Custom Package. I'm not going to get into all the nitty gritty details of why right now, but just know that you need to go to custom package, okay? The next step is to decide what your file size is going to be. And unfortunately, the way Lightroom works is that if your selection is printer, okay, you cannot create a template that is not the same size as a printer. So if you want to use this template for, let's say, uh, a Instagram picture or um, a Facebook header or something like that, you are going to be limited in your options. For the sake of the tutorial, pick JPEG file. Okay, so when you click, click print or print a file, it will then print it as a JPEG image. Okay, um, just for now, just copy my settings. File resolution, I have chosen 300. PPI, which is different to DPI. DPI is dots per image. Do, sorry, dots per inch. PPI is pixels per inch, if I'm not mistaken. So this will give you a higher JPEG resolution. Print sharpening, I've kept it at low. You can change that to standard or high as you need. Matte media type, matte, because, well, we're not printing it. Okay, well, unless you are and you know you're going to print onto gloss, do that. Okay. JPEG quality as 100, and this is where the magic happens in terms of your file size. Your custom file dimensions. Now look what happens. The minute I click that, my margins disappear, and we now can do things, okay? So that template that I showed you in the very beginning is a 12 by 12 inch template. So all I've done, select your press 12, select here, press 12. Okay, now look, we have a different size. Fantastic. Color management, I keep it to sRGB for the sake of simplicity. A lot of places use sRGB, a lot of websites use it, it's easier. Intent, perceptual, fine. Print adjustments, I leave that unchecked. I don't want Lightroom to change what the image looks like. I've already edited these images in Photoshop, and I don't want Lightroom to make any sort of decisions around the images. Perfect. So now that we've selected or decided on how big our page is, for the sake of my own sanity, I just want to remove all these lines and distracting elements. So just under Rulers, Grid, and Guides, unclick Show Guides. So it all disappears, and we've got a light, nice big piece of real estate to work on with no distractions. The next step is to decide on sort of how many images you want and your layout. Now, we don't need to do that. We know what layout we're creating. I've created it already. Um, so it's going to be three images sort of in a square orientation at the top and a big image at the bottom. Cool. So how do we do this? We go to cells and we start putting cells in. Okay, now it doesn't really, like I wouldn't get too hung up about choosing the correct um, size at all times. So you could choose 2 by 2.5 for every single cell that you're about to place because once it's in this block, we can now do things to the cell. So I can move it down and create that big cell at the bottom, all right? 
and then I can create the three blocks. Okay, and again, not too fussed. All right. Now when I do this, I'm doing it this way just to keep the dimensions as accurate as possible. I will do another video on how I actually space my cells. Um, I don't genuinely, generally do it this way. This is just for the sake of keeping the video shorter and quicker. I do it in a little bit of a slightly more complicated way that involves a bit more maths. All right. Now look what happens because I've said snap to cells which is an important setting and a very useful setting, grid snap. You can either snap to the cell, which will snap to the edges. The edges will all always snap to each other, or to the grid, which means if this is not aligned with the grid and you start moving this one, it's not going to snap to the cell, it's going to snap to the underlying grid. So we just click that again, those blue lines. I don't know if you can see them, but that's what it snaps to. Okay, so we don't want that. We want to snap to cells. All right. This will allow me to create blocks of roughly the same size. Right. I'm just making a very rough little jobby here. As you can see, it's very rough at the moment, and I could really spend a lot more time getting this piece more accurate. For the sake of right now of how do we create the template, we're not going to stress about that. Okay? If I want to save this template, so let's say I've spent the last 10 minutes creating this, which, you know, I haven't, <laughs> and I want to save it. How do we do that? Click on this plus icon under template browser and give your template a name. So I like to name it to help me find it in the future. So for image um, 12, no, for image single page layout. And as you can see here, I have a folder called 12 by 12 inch album page presets. I'm not going to use that folder. I'm going to create a new folder. For the sake of the tutorial, let's call it tutorial 12 by 12 inch album page. Okay. I say create. Now we've got a new folder. And see it automatically created um, or populated under template browser, which is what we want. So there's a four image single page layout. Create. Now, why have I saved it before I've even used it? The reason being is once I'm happy, I don't want to make a mistake. This means that if I put this image in and put that image in and I just keep adding images, <laughs> bathroom, um, and let's say I'm like, I don't know, and I start messing with this accidentally, so accidentally, such an accident, all right, and I'm like, oh no, but I had this perfect layout that I've just spent the last 10 minutes building, what happened to my layout, you haven't lost it, so if you go back to the folder you created, and you click it, oh look, there it is, done, no issue, now you have a template, now you can use this particular template for as many images as you want. An important thing that I'd like to add to this um, video is what happens if you create the template but you realize that you want to make a change to it. So for argument's sake, if I just populate this very quickly again with some random images from a house that I photographed, so I have all these random mismatched images and I'm like, you know what? I think it would look good with a black border. But I don't want to create another template. I actually just want to modify this template because I never wanted to look like this again. I always wanted to have a black border around all the images. Interesting thing to note, unfortunately with the way it's designed, I can't define only these images to have black borders all of the cells will get black borders. Okay, so if I say photo border, 
Or let's go in a stroke. Which one do I prefer? I honestly still haven't figured out the difference between these two. They kind of feel the same to me. Um, so if anyone does know what the difference is, cool, let me know. <laughs> right, so black is selected and I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. There we go. So now I have this template. It's got my images in it and it has a black border. But the catch is if I click on this and I start populating again, my black border is gone. Okay, so what we do, just random, random. Okay, so what we do is I'm in this, I select inner stroke and I go back to roughly seven. What is that? Points. Okay. If I want to save this template or override my template, find the correct template. See, if I hover, you see it over here in the preview. Right click and update with current settings. Click that. Again, you feel like nothing's happened. There's no dialogue telling you what's happened. If I click it again, yet again, we look at it and it looks exactly the same until I start dragging images into it. Okay, now suddenly look, all our borders that we've created in this package are there. Fantastic, guys. So in a very brief, as brief as I could make it nutshell, this is how you create templates for your print module in Lightroom. If I want to then print this, all I have to do is go down to print to file, save it as whatever <laughs> I want to save it as, and then click save when it all figures itself out. For now, it's going to take me long to connect to the network and all that, but you get the idea. Okay, um, I will create a video specifically on how I deal with placing all the objects because I actually do it quite precisely. If you are as pedantic about precision as I am, then um, yeah, watch that video to see how I place it so precisely because, I mean, you'll see if I just get to the template it's ridiculously precise like there are the gaps are particular okay um, I will deal with that in a, in a completely different video simply because it's a lot of steps there is maths involved if you want to do it as precisely as I want to do it sometimes um, and I'm happy to show you that but we'll do it in a different video to keep this one shorter Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you learnt something from this Lightroom tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed whatever uh, template that you've just made and hopefully it increases your workflow and helps you do things faster. It's a bit of work in the beginning um, and especially to get used to it, but I think once you have the overall idea, it gets a lot easier to understand. I hope you have an amazing day, evening, afternoon, whatever time of the year it is, whatever time of the day it is where you are. And yeah, guys, if you liked this video, please do feel to, well, like the video. You see what I did there? Um, it was very lame. <laughs> if you, if you um, want to see more from me, please do feel free to subscribe and, uh, you know, click that you want to receive notifications. I am trying to be a lot better about posting every week. So I'm trying to get into the rhythm, you know, posting these or videoing, videoing, video recording, huh? <laughs> these late at night so that I get it done and the audio isn't interrupted by, oh, hello, by sounds like that, sounds of the day. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you in the next video. Love you guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.